the WordPress REST API. When you're developing for WordPress, there are a number of APIs that you can use to interact with your site data. One of the most important of these is the REST API. This lesson serves as an introduction to the WordPress REST API. You will learn what the REST API is, as well as some key REST API concepts like routes, endpoints, and global parameters through a series of example requests that you can perform in a browser. You will also learn where to go to find out more information about the WordPress REST API. The WordPress REST API provides an interface for applications to interact with a WordPress site. These applications could be WordPress plugins, themes, or custom applications that need to access WordPress site data. One of the most well-known implementations of the WordPress REST API is the Block Editor which is a JavaScript application that interacts with WordPress data through the REST API. If you open your browser's developer tools and take a look at the Network tab, you can see the requests that are made to the WordPress REST API when you interact within the block editor. API stands for Application Programming Interface. It's a set of functionality that allows applications to interact with each other. WordPress has many APIs. The REST API is just one of them. REST stands for Representational State Transfer, which is a software architectural style that describes a uniform interface between physically separate components. At its core, the WordPress REST API provides REST endpoints, or URIs, which represent the posts, pages, taxonomies, and any other custom data types. Your code can send and receive data as JavaScript object notation also known as JSON, to these endpoints to fetch, modify, and create content on your site. Let's dive into some concepts of the REST API to understand them better. In the context of the WordPress REST API, a root is a URI which can be mapped to different HTTP methods. An HTTP method is the type of request that's made whenever you interact with anything on the web. For example, when you browse to a URL on the web, a GET request is made to the server to request the data. When you submit a form, a POST request is made, which passes the submitted form data to the web server. The mapping of individual HTTP methods to a root is known as an endpoint. So you would typically have, for example, a GET endpoint for fetching data, a POST endpoint for creating data, and a DELETE endpoint for deleting data all using the same root. One thing to note about testing REST API routes on a local WordPress installation is that you may need to enable a permalink setting other than plain. This is because the REST API uses the same URL rewriting functionality as permalinks to map the human readable routes and endpoints to the relevant internal request. So if your local WordPress installation is using the default plain permalink setting, change it to something else like post name. Let's look at some examples of routes and endpoints. If you open a browser and go to the wp-json URI of a WordPress site, you will be making a GET request to that URI, which returns a JSON response. Some browsers have built-in support to pretty print a JSON response, which will display it in a more readable format. If you're using Firefox to view a JSON response, it allows you to switch between different views as well as inspect the request headers. Depending on your requirements, there are also browser extensions like JSON Formatter for Chrome or JSON Peep for Safari. The data return is a JSON response showing what routes are available and what endpoints are available within each route. In this example, wp-json is a root, and when that root receives a GET request, it's handled by the endpoint which displays the data. By contrast, the wp-json wpv2 posts root offers a GET endpoint which returns a list of posts, but also a POST endpoint. If you are an authenticated user and you submit the right data via a POST request to the POST root, the request is handled by the endpoint which creates new posts. Typically, the same route, in this case WPJSON WPv2 posts, 
will have different endpoints for different HTTP methods, including get for fetching data, post for creating data, and delete for deleting data. The WordPress REST API includes a number of global parameters which control how the API handles the request and response handling. These operate at a layer above the actual resources themselves and are available on all resources. Global parameters are implemented on the REST API routes as query string parameters. Query strings start with a question mark and are followed by a series of key value pairs separated by ampersand. Take a look at the posts route you looked at earlier by requesting the route in a browser, thereby activating the get endpoint. As you can see, the default is to return all the available fields for a post. However, you can update the route by adding the fields global parameter, and then specify the fields you want to return in the response as a comma delimited list. So in this case, we were looking for the author, ID, excerpt, title, and link fields. If you make a second GET request by refreshing the browser, only the fields you have requested to be returned in the response are available. The WordPress REST API also supports pagination and ordering of results. Pagination is handled by the per page, page, and offset parameters. For example, you can update the post route to return only five posts per page by adding the per page parameter to the route. It's also possible to order the results using the order and order by parameters. For example, you can update the post route to order by post title in descending order. The WordPress Developer Resources site has an entire section dedicated to the REST API, which includes sections on the key REST API concepts, frequently asked questions, using and extending the REST API, and more.